but they're awesome it was an awesome time and people got saved at that camp we had people baptized in the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and then uh, at the end of toward the end of the camp when we prayed for the sick maybe about 14 people came to testify of healing physical healing they received in their bodies and so it was so incredible there was one girl who had a hard time seeing from a distance because of something that he had she had and she got healed and she started to read from a long distance of people letters on somebody's shirt from a long distance and so it was so incredible to see people saying when they had problems in their backs and they would see crack and the thing would realign itself and the pain would disappear or with things with fingers they would feel a crack and the finger would be moved and I'm just like a kid in a candy store like even when Ilya the moment Ilya started mentioning these testimonies I start crying because I'm like I'm the lowest of the low out of this whole room I feel the least qualified to do what I do out of every person in this room you choose any person and I feel like they're better than me they probably are but to see the grace of God touching people healing people saving people baptizing people with the Holy Spirit honestly there's just nothing better and trust me and I've had moments where somebody hands you a lot of money okay nothing compares to that I had a moment that I married my beautiful wife and yeah <laughs> and tomorrow yeah let's not go there and tomorrow I'm gonna celebrate a thousand four hundred sixty one days of being with her which equals to four years you know and that is awesome but the presence of God and being used by God even surpasses that being used by the Holy Spirit it surpasses that and so it was so awesome so wonderful and now hearing that you know tomorrow uh, our people are gonna go and minister at the local church here and bring the vision it just encourages me knowing God is gonna move again and God is gonna do some awesome things amen and even yesterday we had the opportunity to also uh, lead somebody to Jesus right in our house Jasmine our our good friend here uh, gave her life to Jesus Christ yesterday it was awesome and honestly and that is the most incredible life that you can live it's not just by making money but by making difference for the glory of God can somebody say amen seeing people healed seeing people saved and seeing their lives change through the Savior Jesus Christ and I just want to challenge you please rededicate your life not just to go into a church spying a church spectating but be a participator get involved with bringing people to Jesus Christ get involved to praying for the sick and get involved with seeing people be free from demonic strongholds in their lives that's why we're here at six o'clock 6 30 in the morning on Wednesday there's a big group of us we come out we pray to see those things happen these things don't happen in an accident guys these things are not because somehow we are charismatic loud you know hipsters you know we have this cool hair cool songs you know and just cool lights and somehow people just will come and get saved and get healed the devil is a liar stuff like that never happens these things are rare as diamonds salvations of people and healings and deliverance from demonic things are rare as diamonds Tri city has over 150 churches and you can count on your hand how many experience these things because these things are rare guys it's not just about joining a religious organization that's why most of the people who come and they say I always went to church but something happened here that's why I want to protect this treasure this and each one of us let's get involved putting our prayers and passion and our focus to see this grow for the glory of God and somebody say amen let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ amen how many of you guys enjoyed worship tonight amen it's good to have Alexandra back amen amen you know that the second song that was sung yesterday was written by a worship team yes and so uh, yeah if they would have said that they wrote it you probably would have singing more be more enthusiastic amen let's give Jesus a round of applause for awesome our awesome worship team they're gonna be writing songs and we're gonna be you'll see we'll be having our own albums we're gonna be having our own worship nights and by the grace of God if everything's gonna be great we're gonna have our youth conference in the spring next year we're gonna have our own songs our own preachers and we're going to see the glory of God move and do incredible things amen we even got invited about two weeks ago with our wonderful friends from Sacramento where they invited uh, not just me to speak but they invited the whole leadership team and they were specific make sure our team comes 
and so we're gonna take our whole team there for three days to do a youth conference in Sacramento there with our team and so we are really really excited God is gonna do some incredible awesome things if there was any time I was excited about the future of our church it is today and it's gonna be tomorrow too <laughs> come on let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ hallelujah amen amen with that said let's open the holy scriptures let's go to first samuel chapter 17 and verse 45 and it's a classic story that most of us have heard and know hollywood is making a new movie about it um, next year david and goliath and today i want to take a, just a fresh spin on this story to encourage us and david said to the philistine you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. The next verse, verse 46. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And when you realize a teenager is speaking, you're like, this bro has some issues. That's an attitude. I mean, read this. The Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you it's like somebody's been watching r-rated movies or sort of jack bauer i mean that's brutal and this day i will give your carcasses to the camp of the camp of the philistines to the birds of the air in those days something worse than dying is having birds eat you dead that's what he's saying he said what's gonna happen to you guys is worse than dying i mean that's faith I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth and all the earth may know. He didn't say that David is the man of God or David is the man. He's saying that the Lord is God in Israel. That is what it's all about. Can somebody say amen? And verse 47, then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with the sword and the spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will deliver you into not my hand but our hand. Can somebody say amen? amen. We're going to talk about how to slay your giants or another word slay your demons. How to overcome your problems and your issues. Before we touch the the subject it's important to notice Goliath was a giant. Some people say he was nine feet nine uh, nine feet and nine inches tall it was very very tall his armor alone weighed about 125 pounds very big guy I mean his armor alone was as big as my own physical weight and stuff so he was a very big guy very intimidating guy he intimidated people and he got up there and he gave this proposal and there's a problem with this proposal he said that if anybody will fight me alone and wins we will just drop our weapons and become your slaves but if somebody fights me alone and I win, then you guys will have to drop our weapons and surrender as slaves. Now at first it seems good. Okay, why everybody dies, one person die, then afterwards we all become slaves. But the problem with this challenge was, there was two main problems with this challenge. This challenge was also a trap. Goliath's challenge was a trap and I'll give you just the two reasons why. The first reason is because of isolation. See Goliath was interested not for armies to fight armies, he was interested in him fighting a person alone. Meaning he wanted to take someone out from the army and fight them alone. Goliath promoted a superhero syndrome. I can do it by myself, I don't need nobody. And though God used this foolishness by promoting his name, we don't see God ordaining or encouraging the tactic of supermen fighting to determine the victory for their armies. God always is in the army, not in super soldiers. God is not interested in building superheroes. God is interested in building a super army. People who fall for this trap of the devil to isolate themselves from the army, to isolate themselves from the church, to isolate themselves from the group of people many times will find themselves being Goliath's breakfast. He eats them alive. You may say well David didn't. 
that's in the first giant he fought but there was one more giant David fought alone and that giant destroyed him it was when the army went to fight but David stayed home and that giant destroyed David and that tells us you're not safe when you're not with the army when we are in the vision and you are outside you're not safe when we are seeking to bring people to Jesus and you are on the outside you are not safe doesn't matter how much superpower you have your power as a Christian is in the community not in isolation you and I are like snowflakes we are weak when we are alone but when we are together we can stop traffic Amen. Amen. When you are alone, Satan can crush you. When we are together, we can crush his kingdom. The Bible says we are a body. We're not an island. Which means each person, I am because you are, you are because I am. When you isolate yourself from the Christians and when you isolate yourself from other people and you are just by yourself, you are falling for a trap of a Goliath to isolate you so he can defeat you. When you are alone, he can defeat you. When we are together, he will never defeat us. Can somebody say amen? Statistic actually has proven that elderly people, those without adequate social interaction, die twice as likely prematurely the increased mortality risk is comparable to that of smoking means if you are alone you struggle with loneliness and you don't have people around you your chances of dying are the same as someone who's smoking why the first thing God said that was not good about his creation is for man to be alone one of the ways we punish people for crime is by making them alone loneliness and being alone having nobody around you who knows you and who knows your life and encourages you my friend it's equivalent to smoking if you walk around and say I don't drink and smoke but your life is in isolation you are not going to live a long life you will die very short that's what the science has already proven this is not bible this is science bible already talks about it also they did a statistic that loneliness is twice as harmful for you as obesity many people think that you know if if uh, we have extra weight and we all know if you have extra weight you have a lot of other diseases that will come in as if people who don't but they have proven that loneliness is twice as dangerous and this is why social isolation impairs immune function and boosts inflammation which leads to arthritis type 2 diabetes and heart disease so when Goliath says, I want to get you alone, it's a trap. Don't fall for it. I know some people say, well, I cannot join the church. I cannot be a part of the church because church is full of hypocrites. There is room for one more. On. How many of you stop going to the Gold's Gym? Because after Gold's Gym, you see me eating McDonald's. You don't stop going to Gold's Gym because people there eat snacks and drink coke while working out. You're looking, you're such a hypocrite. But you still go to Gold's Gym. So don't tell yourself, well, I can't come to church because there's a lot of hypocrites there. The devil is a liar. That's an excuse and we have to push that excuse away. Remember one thing, the price for unity is always less than the consequence for isolation. The price you will pay to be in a community is a lot less than the price you will pay for being isolated from the body of believers. Yes, there are some rough patches you and I are going to have to work on if we're going to be together. But you must understand, this is a small price compared to the price you and I have to pay if we don't live in a community. Can somebody say amen? So Goliath throws a challenge and he says, I want you to get a loan. But the second challenge that Goliath throws us in is this one. Is that Goliath wants you to believe that if you lose the hand or the combat between you and me, then the whole country is going to lose a war permanently. Meaning, if I win a battle, everyone will lose their war. 
Now at first it seems very easy. It's like, well, it makes sense. One fight determines the outcome for the whole nation and one fight determines the outcome for all generations. That's too much at stake for one fight. You don't have to be a soldier to know. You don't win a war by winning a battle. You don't have to be a basketball player to know that just because you won one quarter, that doesn't mean you won a game. But Goliath wants you to lose your ob objectivity. That means he wants you to think because you lost a battle, you lost a war. He wants you to think because you have a bad day, that means you have a bad life. He wants you to think because you had a poor past, that means you will have a terrible future. He wants you to think that because you've been divorced, that means you will never be married again. He wants you to think that because your parents were not there for you, that means that you could never be a good parent for someone else. The devil wants to remove objectivity from your life that you look at the one situation of your life and you like make that determine the outcome for the rest of your life. But that is not the case. Because people throughout the history, all the thieves have looked to the robber on the cross to know your past doesn't determine your future. People who committed adultery look to the King David to know there is hope even beyond the sin of adultery. People who have murdered have looked to Moses to know there is hope beyond the sin of murder. People who've committed sexual sins have looked to the woman who was sinful and whom Jesus says go and not uncondemn you. They've looked to her to find hope beyond that. People who lost a battle, they always have looked to those people because those people reminded us you might have lost a battle. You don't have to lose a war because your captain never loses a war and if you are on his side, you are going to have a victory. Can somebody say amen? My Bible says the righteous will fall seven times and he will what? He will get up. Goliath says if you fall once, you're done. I have a notice to serve to the Goliath. You are wrong. Amen. You know why he's wrong? Because when David defeated Goliath, did Philistines drop their weapons? Of course not. Goliath is a liar and so is Satan. Satan wants you to believe that because of what happened in your past, you have no hope for your future. He wants you to believe because of what was done to you in your past that means your life could never ever be restored and repaired again. Nothing Christ can do but the Bible wants us to believe. Gospel of grace challenges and changes everything. Everything. I watched the testimony yesterday that was heartbreaking of how one child walked into the room and saw his dad being murdered and found out that his mom hired an assassin to murder his dad. They dragged mom through court and they found the man who killed his dad and his mom and they put him through courts and through all kinds of things and he struggled. This young man struggled to forgive, struggled to to believe in God and his mom was put on the death sentence and she was awaiting her death. And she always wanted to talk to him but he ignored all the letters, ignored all the phone calls and said I don't want to do nothing with you. I'm just going to walk away. He got married, had children, became a teacher and just tried to be a Christian father but tried to ignore and forget that part of his life that was so dark and embarrassing he couldn't even talk about it. Until one day in Nashville, completely different city and a different state, a teacher across you know in the same school came to him and said what is your last name? He told him his last name. He said, do you happen to know a woman by the same last name? When he mentioned that woman's name, turns out it's the same name as his mother. He says, well, I used to. How do you know her? He says, I used to do services in jail. And there was this woman and I led her to Jesus Christ. He said, okay, and what happened next? He said, she started to tell me about her sins and the things that she's done and how bad she regrets that. And here is a son who tried to run away from a part of his life that he knew is so bad and devastating. And he says, and this woman said that she has a son. And that her hope before she gets electrocuted is to be able to ask his son for forgiveness. And here's a teacher who stands there and he realizes he's talking about his mom. He goes back there to see his mom because of conviction that he had in his heart 
and says mom I don't know why you did this you know it's already 20 something years later and he receives forgiveness from her he forgives her finds out that she was tormented by all kinds of thoughts she had all these things and she received forgiveness and now she was peacefully awaiting to be executed until a governor or one senator something happened one thing led to another they reverse her case and not only they removed the electric chair from her future they actually released her on the parole where now she comes back and this woman testifies in the video how with along with her son now they help other people to come to Jesus Christ you know you're looking at that story and you're like can something so bad come out of that with God anything is possible God can take something like betrayal of Joseph's brothers and use those events to put him in the throne God can use something as if you took an arrow and you want to shoot an arrow forward you will always pull it backwards and the devil wants you to say when your life is going backwards that means you are going backwards but if you are in the center of God's will and it seems like your life is going backwards sometimes your setback is actually a setup for something great in your life and therefore today I want to encourage you don't lose your objectivity can somebody say amen don't lose your objectivity the things that seem like are going against you right now remember our God it can use the foolish things in this world to accomplish his purposes don't lose your objectivity don't lose your don't lose your community and don't lose your objectivity with God all things are possible in Jesus name you know sometimes on this side of the eternity we can we can complain to God for something but when we die and we go to heaven sometimes some of those things we complain to God about we're going to be praising God for you know the people who who missed the one lady one actress who missed her train on 9-11 because of a friend who she helped on the road and because she missed the train she was so bummed out because now she will come late to work except it saved her life something she was upset about until the twin towers fell and now that upsetness became her praise report the people who got delayed to a flight on Malaysia's plane who were upset because their flight got delayed or the traveling agent there was one family who missed something messed up their tickets and they didn't get on that flight and they were so upset until 24 hours later they were so happy it just shows that we cannot trust the way we look at our circumstances sometimes and the enemy wants you to look at one area of your life and say look how bad it's going but sometimes that is not how it's going to end up losing a battle doesn't mean losing a war if God is on your side all things are possible if you have committed sin remember men don't drown by falling into water men drown by staying in the water get up shake it off and move forward repent the bible says and move forward with God if you lost a battle you didn't lose a war if you lost your virginity you didn't lose your future you still can regain through Jesus Christ if you lost your driving record or a driving license if something happened in the past and you feel like your life is to zero it is if you would be an atheist but it's not if Christ is your savior he has a tendency of changing and transforming things and I rely on our strength we cannot rely we rely on his power can somebody say amen. amen how do we overcome our giants we overcome those lies of isolation and we overcome those lies of the community the the part of objectivity the the thought and we have a very short time that I wanted to share with you just simple few steps few insights from David's story with the Goliath. David comes to the scene bringing cheese and food to his brothers and to the captain and the Bible says that when he hears about the Goliath he comes to his brothers and asks question what is going on what am I going to get if I challenge this man and the moment they saw that it was David the Bible says they became very angry they became very upset they became very agitated and David instead of fighting with them arguing with them and losing his temper the Bible says David though was young but pretty mature for his age he walked away the first thing that I want us to remember before we slay our Goliath is we have to walk away from toxic people and toxic places walk away from toxic people and toxic places toxic places are places that have toxic people and toxic people make toxic places but sometimes if you stick around in a toxic place too long you become toxic yourself 
so you must understand one thing about your life is this you cannot have a good life surrounded with toxic people you cannot defeat a Goliath if you're surrounded with negative people David knew one thing I cannot defeat my Goliath if I keep being around these toxic people you have to understand that there's four types of people in our lives there are those who add there's those who subtract there's those who multiply and there's those who divide but one thing is certain no one in your life is not influencing you they're either influencing for good or for bad they're either adding or subtracting but nobody in your life is neutral people around us could be toxic from the beginning God was teaching his people how to walk away from toxic places and toxic people God told Abraham walk away from Ur of Chaldeans God told Lot walk away from Sodom people of Israel were in a toxic place with a lot of toxic people called Egyptians who hurt them deeply physically emotionally mentally spiritually and God took a whole nation out of toxic people and toxic places you cannot have your future to the fullest if you permit toxic people in your phone in your Facebook Instagram or in your schedule they have to be removed with love removed if you have Potiphar's wife hanging out around you you're not going to make it in purity and you cannot witness to those you're tempted by can somebody say amen you can walk in a mall and pray Lord God clothe Victoria who has no secrets with clothes of righteousness that is not going to work you got to keep walking brother keep walking and let Victoria who has no secrets be witnessed by other Victorias who have secrets for the glory of God you got to walk away from toxic places this practically means if you go to places where toxic and afterwards you come out you're drained you come out you're empty for some people for many people toxic places is movie theaters you go in you watch and you come back you empty or sometimes you come back full of demons that's even worse for some people toxic places is certain friends you hang out with certain parties you go in and what they do there afterwards you come out your consciousness screams at you yells at you and you have to sleep with your consciousness it's no longer your friend and you feel like you just jumped in a pool of poop it's toxic place toxic people and for the purity of your life for the future of your life you have to understand nobody defeats their Goliaths hanging out with toxic people Jesus came to the room and the girl was dead they asked him could you raise this girl from the dead the problem with the room is that room had a lot of toxic people and Jesus before he raised the girl from the dead if Jesus couldn't operate to his best potential around toxic people who you think you are who you think you can operate to your fullest potential around some naysayers negative people who abuse you hurt you you cannot if Jesus couldn't do it that is a lesson for you and me you cannot operate to your fullest potential around toxic people and in toxic places Jesus removed all of those people first and the Bible says then he came to the girl and he raised her from the dead that is exactly what we must do remove toxic people and remove walk away from toxic places amen, amen. the second thing that David did is after he walked away from toxic people and toxic places the Bible says he didn't take a stone and a slingshot and walked in the middle of the field said Goliath you over there come over here I'm gonna deal with you right now I'll finish you the Bible says he didn't do that he went to the man who was in charge David went through proper channels before going to Goliath the second thing is very important I'm sharing with you secrets that will revolutionize your life and I'm sharing them for free and we have no offering tonight <laughs> to those of you who come in churches after my money we have no offering tonight it's free but it's going to change your life this is going to change your life the second thing the most important before you can deal with the demons is you have to deal with the authority in your life it hit me this week how David did not skip Saul before he destroyed Goliath Saul was a bad man Saul was no longer anointed Saul, Saul was no longer the man he used to be Saul was a coward Saul was supposed to be defeating Goliath 40, 40 days ago Saul disobeyed God, disobeyed Samuel, disappointed God and disappointed Samuel. He, he let his whole country down. Saul is the man that if I and you would have been David walked in and says, I have the word from the Lord. You're a coward and you should resign tomorrow. Because he was a bad man. 
He was one of those authority people you don't want to be around. But it's interesting that David doesn't go to face Goliath until he first goes and he deals with Saul. The way he deals with the toxic people, he walks away. The way he deals with the authority is this. He doesn't rebuke the authority, though it should have been rebuked. He asks permission to go fight. You cannot walk in the authority of God if you don't walk under the authority of God. Period. Demons will not listen to your rebuke if you don't listen to your parents rebuke. You can walk around and scream, I bind you devil, I bind you devil, I bind you devil. But if you don't honor your authority, demons have no right to submit to yours. The first thing people mention about Jesus' is preaching is not the eloquence of his speech or how amazing his illustrations were with the birds and the seeds. The Bible says when he spoke, they all said this. They said he speaks with such authority. They didn't say his voice is so deep. They didn't say, you know, he's like a, he's like a he's so strong communicator. He says, he has such an authority in his voice, in his words. But if you look at Jesus' life, I don't think nobody in this earth has ever walked under God's authority to that degree that Jesus did. The Bible says in Philippians, submitted himself to death, even death on the cross. Which tells us, the amount of authority we walk in is consistent with amount of authority we submit under. You cannot come up to Goliath on your own. You have to go through the proper channels. And many of us say, well, my authority is like King Saul. If you come to this church, your authority is not like King Saul. It's you who is like King Saul and it's Jesus. Well, my parents may not be so godly. David was very wise about the way he handled the authority. People always come up to me and say, how can I have a good relationship with my authority? I mean, how can I have a good relationship with my boss, with my parents, and with my pastors? I'm going to give you one tip. And this tip I learned from David. Authority don't like when you give them orders. They like when you ask permission. Did you notice David didn't come to Saul and said, you're a coward. I'm going to help you out. He didn't give him orders. He said, can I go and fight him? Saul says you can't and if you will go I'm gonna give you my way and David didn't say your way sucks he didn't say your way never worked it doesn't work for you what, what makes you think it's gonna work for me he didn't do that he says I will try he tried his way and he noticed it doesn't work and he says Saul with all due respect I've tried but it doesn't seem to work is it okay if I give that back to you and Saul says go and the Lord be with you and then God comes in if we want to walk in authority, we got to walk under authority. To walk under authority, that means you ask permission. Before I get a chance to say yes to my speaking engagements, I ask permission. Before I buy a car, I ask permission. I ask other people's input. Before marrying, I ask other people's input. Before building or buying or renting a house, I asked other people's input. That's why less mistakes you will make when you come to people in your life with input instead of coming to them with your decision. It bothers me when people come, I need to meet with you. And so I'm there praying and fasting sometimes that like, God give me wisdom. They come and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know, divorcing my husband. I already did it yesterday. Signed the papers, just giving you a heads up before anybody else finds out. I was like, and why did we meet? I could have found that out on Facebook tomorrow. Or, hey, I'm just letting you know, I'm moving out of your cities. I'm letting you know, I am doing this. Why did you need to let me know? Who am I? I'm not God. And it bothers me because, and then people say, why am I keep making wrong mistakes? Because your authority, you're, you're telling your authority what you're doing. You're not asking for advice. How can your authority be of blessing to you when you're never asking them to be a blessing to you? Don't even bother them. Just do what you want to do. Make a mess out of your life and put a sticker on it and say, I did it by myself. But if you want to use the blessing from your father, a blessing from your mother, a blessing from your pastor, you come and you say, you know what, this is what I want to do. I want to hear your input. I want to hear your insight. I want to have your blessing. And then you are writing not only on the wisdom of a 22 year old peanut brain, but you're writing on the wisdom of men and women of God who went before you, who've experienced certain things and who also taking it from the Word of God, not only their infatuation or chemical imbalance. Can somebody say amen? amen? So submit yourself to authority and you will be protected. 
when you submit yourself to the authority, you can fight your demons. You can overcome your demons. And the third thing that David did, he walked away from toxic relationships. The second thing is he went through proper channels. And number three, David, he confronted the source of his problems instead of dealing with the symptoms of it. David confronted the source of his problems instead of dealing with the symptoms of it. When David, met Tox, when David met his brothers and they started to make fun of him and accuse him, his brothers were crazy, but they were not his enemy. Saul was crazy, but it wasn't his enemy. I love David. He was not distracted with crazy people around him to lose focus of what the source of the problem was. Sometimes when you're surrounded with toxic people, you're quickly to assume they are your problem. Sometimes when you're surrounded with bad authority who hurt you and God forbid abuse you, you are convinced they are your problem. It means if I get rid of my parents or if I walk away from my parents' house, I will be fine. If I could just get rid of that abusive boyfriend and then my life is going to change. I'm going to get another boyfriend and everything's going to be fine. And that is dealing with the symptoms of the problem, not with the source of the problem. People can be crazy, but they're not your enemy. People can be abusive, but they're not your enemy. People could be diminishing, but they're not your enemy. People could be demon possessed, but they're not your enemy. There could be an authority figures who could be so bad and messed up but they are not your enemy. When you lose sight and you walk away from toxic places, submit yourself to the authority but you don't see your real enemy, you're not going to win a battle. I'm not going to win a battle. Most people see people as their enemies. Others see themselves and they will never forgive themselves. Some are spiritual. And they see God as their enemy because if God could why he didn't he could have prevented this so they turn all their anger against God they're so quick to give credit to themselves when things are going good and so quick to judge God when things are going bad and Satan is left innocent he's on a vacation he's tired of doing bad he no longer does bad and he doesn't exist for some people your real enemy is not your friends, not your enemies, not people who get on your nerves. Your real enemy of all the problems in your life, the Bible says, is Satan. He's the author of all troubles. You may say, well, it's my boyfriend. I know it's my boyfriend. The problem, he's the fifth one. It's not the boyfriend. You will say, well, then it's me. Yes, you need to work on yourself. Have you noticed that walking from a toxic places is like overcoming the world? Submitting to the authority is like overcoming your flesh. But there is one more. It's the Goliath. And he has to come down. Uh, my wonderful cousin, who happens to be also my neighbor, a few weeks ago had a very interesting incident. And I asked her permission to share that. She had an incident when um, she has a habit of opening the faucets and forgetting to close them it's an interesting habit she went in the basement and she opened the faucets and forgot to close them so she went to sleep and somehow the drain in the sink wasn't working or something like that I'm not sure of the details but next thing that happened is next morning she walked in and it looked like a world flood has come to the basement of the house there was enough water that it covered the whole basement and I'm not certain of how much it was but it was enough that the whole basement was covered in water. Now let's say that you are in the same situation. I'm going to ask you, you know, what did you do first? Did you first go and take a bucket and start to get the water out of the basement? Did you take, you know, cloths, try to mop it out or did you go look for the source of the problem? What would you do first? When you go from one relationship to another, it's equivalent to a relationship flood. And most people, what they do first when they have a disappointment in relationship is they try to mop things out. It means get a new brother with a new name, new color skin, new eye color, new job, and a new car perhaps. But the faucet, the water is still coming out. And Satan would be interested in having you mop the basement as long as the water is still coming out. 
he is interested in you dealing with the symptoms of your problem so that you ignore the real problem itself you know what my cousin did she didn't care about the flood first she wanted to find out where did it came from and when she found out it came from the sink water she didn't go and says oh we need to mop and get the water out she says we need to stop the faucet first and when the faucet is stopped then you can take and start doing the process of removing the water from the basement if there is a curse on your life dad and mom is divorced grandpa and grandma is divorced everyone is divorced every relationship you start breaks you need to stop stop you have a faucet and it's open getting a new guy changing your appearance getting a car so you can attract better girls is not going to change nothing it's like getting water out of the basement but the faucet of curse is keep coming in and satan stands there stands there and says i'm keeping him busy but he's not making any progress and you are not attacking the goliath you are attacking brothers you are attacking authorities but you're not dealing with the real problem real problem is spiritual and it must be though spiritually i remember i wanted to share the story of Eder and tatiana and i asked them permission to share that you know Eder is a good friend of mine and he got saved in our youth ministry when we played soccer and uh, when he was here at our church and before he went to New York to meet Tatiana and then they got married I already kind of talked to him a little bit about the fact that Eder comes from a broken family which is pretty typical in the day and the generation we live in and I told him that because of that Eder you must understand this is not just broken family it's also spiritual I told him that this is iniquity means something that just passed on I'm not saying that you're a bad person but it just passed on and I'm like puppy we call him puppy I said once you are gonna get married within a very short time this curse is going to affect you too I said I don't want to scare you that you're gonna get divorced but you need to be aware you have a faucet that is opening you're walking into a relationship that will have flood but I said puppy when you're gonna have a flood don't mop the floor go to the faucet deal with the faucet do whatever it takes close the faucet and then mop the floor don't make the mistake and you know and honestly that's exactly what happened within a very short time after their marriage you know and Tatiana was the one that started to write to us and say that there's a flood in the basement you know there, we, we're having troubles but these are not normal troubles you know these are troubles where just things that are emotional and and Edder wants to do the same thing that his dad did to his mom and I remember calling Edder calling other people to pray and this is what I only thing I was telling Edder, Edder it's not because you don't love Tatiana it's because there is a curse and we talked about it and this is what it came and I'm like if you hang in there two months you will mop everything out I'm gonna lead you in the prayer and you will see feelings will come back you will see this can end and this can stop with your life and within a month and a half he sticked around and the flood was removed the relationship was brought back to normal he came back to Tri cities at the time I said Tatiana wasn't even saved yet she didn't give her life to Jesus yet she was a she was a church going girl but to surrender her life it didn't happen before that incident before that she gave her life to Jesus same flood happened in Tri cities right when they came and I remember it like yesterday we were sitting in Starbucks on row 68 except now not over the phone but in person I was able to explain to him how spiritual world works and I said bro what has happened to your daddy I'm like your dad is a wonderful man I met him I love that guy but he didn't understand these things and what happened to other relatives and same thing in Tatiana's family like puppy this is spiritual and I'm like we need to pray and there in Starbucks on road 68 I led him in the prayer of renouncing generational curses and saying to God that I am going to receive generational blessings and I will act according to them except this time it's no longer was month and a half but was less than a month and those feelings started to flourish within a few months Tatiana gives her life to Jesus Christ and now the rest is history Amen. why am I sharing this almost every person out of age 25 and up in our generation already has had multiple broken relationships those who have not will and the reason why because most people come from broken families and it's gonna happen unless they do these three things you might think it's a joke until your boyfriend does that 
until your husband is cheating and you have to divorce him. I've seen this honestly week upon week. It shatters my heart. You need to walk away from toxic places. Submit yourself to authority. But third thing, you got to deal with a spiritual problem. Men are not the problem. Women are not the problem. Tri-cities is not the problem. Some of you convinced. Your job is not really the problem. They're all symptoms. The real problem is spiritual. I'm not saying your daddy. The goal is we're not talking about you writing a report and blaming your daddy, blaming your mom. That is not going to solve anything. It's you knowing when the conflict happens and people start f f sparks are flying and people saying we're gonna go this way this is simply repeating a cycle where the devil wants to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and to throw him down both of you have to agree say you know what honey i know you don't like me right now and i know i don't like you right now but there's somebody i hate worse than you it's the devil do you hate him too let's pray together right now Or you push through the disappointment, you push through the hate, you push through the disagreement and you realize your real enemy, the devil wants to hide himself behind your husband and your wife. So that you fight them instead of him. And so that you shatter the relationship, shatter your family, shatter your life. And so that you repeat the cycle, the next generation has the same little stupid cursed life that we pass on to the next generation. And the only way to fix it is to realize people are not your enemy. We do not fight against flesh and blood, Paul says, but against powers, principalities, and spiritual hosts in wicked places. Your enemy is Satan. Your enemy is demons. Your enemy is curses. Your enemy is darkness, not people. They might be crazy. They might be really, really crazy, but they're not the devil. They are not demons. They are not your Goliath and don't waste your stones upon Saul because you can kill Saul and still be defeated. You can get rid of everybody in your life and still be defeated because your real enemy is Satan himself and you gotta save those stones, save that hate, save that thing against him and when he comes your way you throw it out to the glory of God because of the word of God, the blood of Jesus Christ and the word of a testimony. That's why David did not waste his anger. He didn't waste his hate on his brothers. He said, hey boys, don't touch that. That is reserved. That is sacred. And it's for one person in this field. It's not you crazy brothers. You bunch of crazies. If it wouldn't be for the Goliath, I would want to throw that at you. But right now we've got a bigger problem. So step away. Saul, I'm not going to waste that on you. I am going to unleash that on one who is the source of all of this drama. Satan himself. Amen. Amen. There was one businessman in Seattle. I heard the testimony this week. He was struggling financially. Great financial problems. He was working, had a very good business, but he could not make from paycheck to paycheck. And always something would come up. So always something was going on. It's like this financial flood happening in his basement. And one day he was watching this preacher on TV. And we're going to go actually to the church that the preacher that he was watching in Ukraine. And this preacher on TV was sharing a story how he had a similar problem. And until God convicted him that the faucet means the problem that was happening in his life was because that when he was younger he stole money from a lot of people and now financially he opened the faucet on his financial poverty so as he's listening to this preacher on tv he's realizing he said man there's a lot of people i did business with and i just ripped them off he said there are people i did business with and i didn't pay them there are people i did business with who have families and i just literally i just made money but i didn't even give them a penny and as sitting there in front of a tv he started getting so convicted and realizing i have a faucet in my own life that is open and right there on the spot he said lord what would you have me do and god kind of placed on his heart what he should do some people he had to apologize some people he actually had to go back and promise to them that he will pay the money back that he was supposed to pay when they supposed to get the payment from him the moment he did that and this is a youth pastor testifying about this man. He said, I have seen a change in his finances. This guy, anything he touches turns to gold. He said, he's prosperous left and right. He's literally, things are just like luck follows him everywhere. He says, before I knew him, he says, he was, he had bad luck anywhere he turned. It's like, you want to have a problems with finances? Invite him into the room. He says, now you want to have something around you to be good? He says, invite him in. He just comes in, things just go good anywhere he is in. My friends, the point for him wasn't to work harder. The point wasn't to find a new business. The point was this, find the faucet and close it. Can somebody say amen?
if you're this stealing and financially you're struggling you gotta close the faucet of stealing sometimes not only you have to repent and renounce but sometimes you have to go back to those people you stole for, from and apologize them and other times God will even lead you to give them money back if you practice a cult you think it's just gonna be simple I repent it and everything no 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 my friend faucet could be open you gotta renounce that and you gotta throw away any objects you have in your life and connect you with your past can somebody say amen I remember this person particularly in my own life when at a young age I was introduced to pornography through friends of mine in Ukraine and I thought it was something innocent but I never dealt with it the faucet was open at that day and I didn't bother to close it to repent renounce we didn't even know these things I thought it was just an innocent thing they showed us a black and white magazine in Ukraine we brought it to home you know to tore out a small little piece and hid it for a few days until somebody stole it and you just forget about it and move on you know I forget about it and moved on the issue is the devil didn't forget about it and devil didn't move on and we came to the United States within six months of living in the United States in Richland you know we were had to take care of our neighbor's house who left and he gave us for seven days his house to feed his cats clean his yard and to just watch over his house we ruskies curious how Americans live <laughs> I know what we have in our houses but I want to know what they have in their houses you know and I hope he's not gonna be watching or listening to this but I didn't do anything bad I didn't do anything illegal I just opened the closet sneaked in you know opened his kitchen his bedroom just sneaked in just wanted to see how the brother lived you know six to 13 and a half years of age sneaking in into his closet and I've noticed there's 250 DVD porn videos I was like oh okay that's what they do during their free time <laughs> and I know it's not they it's a particular person who was addicted to that and I wish I would say that I closed the door and walked away from it but I didn't because I ignored that time when I watched pornography I didn't go for prayer I didn't go for deliverance a faucet in the water was leaking and from that day on for next two and a half to three years every single month whatever I did I would fall into pornography at least once a month and I wasn't like one of those guys who sat at home and played video games all day and everything it wasn't that case with me I fasted I threw away my computer and I prayed and I did I went even to my pastor I did through the proper channels I did things that I needed to do to get rid of this addiction but there was one thing it kept coming in it kept coming in it was until that revelation that hit me that I have a faucet open and my problem is not just with my flesh my problem is not just with pornography my problem is with demons and hell itself I got demon on my tail every single day and I need to get rid of that demon my flesh will be fine because I'm submitted to my pastor my I'm running from the world but you know I'm staying away from bad places I'm gonna be fine but I gotta get the devil off of my back I, I can't say that I did something like some prayer magic prayer I prayed but one thing that happened to me is my eyes got opened that my battle is not with Vlad my battle is with Satan and then my prayers changed my confession changed what I did changed because I realized I'm not fighting with flesh I'm fighting with demonic powers you know and probably it's eight or nine years I, I lost the count that God set me free from that and that by the grace of God I'm not looking at those things and I'm not falling into those things as before it had to be once a month there's nothing I can do and I tried to mop the floor for a long time but then the Holy Spirit revealed through a few books and through a few ministers that I needed to close the faucet in my life I want to challenge you guys right now you have to defeat your Goliath I'm not saying you're demon possessed maybe a little bit <laughs> but you can be oppressed you can be under attack you can have a faucet open in your life and relationship after relationships you're beautiful you're handsome you're educated you, everything is good somebody will look at the outside this is the person has everything all the ingredients is for successful life except if we unzip your life and take a sneak peek it's hell on earth you're not supposed to live like that for God's sake you're in America but you know what demons are not African demons are not Asian they sneak in into America too without even a green card they come here as well without citizenship and they torment and hurt people either you're American you're Russian Asian Vietnamese Chinese Ukrainian whatever you are they attack all kinds of people whether you're educated or not educated handsome or some handsome like me but they attack everybody and we have to do our job today slay the Goliath stop please stop trying to solve your life deal with the root problem for some of you that means you need to get to the prayer line first 
for others of you, you actually need to go to TB Joshua because your case is pretty heavy. <laughs> for others of you, you need to change your tactics. Stop looking for a new boyfriend. Become a new person. But you can't become a new person by going on a diet and signing up to a gym membership. You become a new person by getting all the darkness, all the demons out, all the curses out. If you come from a broken family, I'm not a prophet of doom. But please understand, you're going to have to face this. You can overcome. We have people who have done. And that's why we are here. To overcome this, to help to overcome this. But you can't overcome it by burying your head in the sand. And walking around like this doesn't exist. And walking around as though Satan is just like, he's not there. Have you noticed that of all the parts of the armor of God, there was nothing for your back? Which means as long as you're facing the devil, God's going to help you. When you're burying your head in the sand and running from him and avoiding him, your back is exposed. You're most vulnerable when you're most ignorant. But when your eyes are open and you say, you know what? I need to stop from toxic places. Submit to authority. But most importantly, i got to stop being an idiot. My real problem is not my parents. Not my boyfriend, even though I don't like him. Should get a restraining, a restraining order by now but, but my real problem is devil himself and I'm gonna fight those curses I'm gonna fight those demons and overcome them for the glory of God can somebody say amen amen amen, amen. let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ